What's on ladies and gentlemen, my name's Ross, I like games, and today we need to continue our look at the top 10 cards from every house in Age of Ascension by having a little bit of a gander at logos. It's only two more to go now, then we will do our top 10 for the entire set. We could do a top 10 right at the beginning, but I like waiting a little while and doing these top 10s and we've all had a whole bunch of games playing with them. So... Starting off then, in at number 10, we've got Redacted. Now, Redacted for me is an extremely weird one. It's key cheating, but honestly, I don't know how often it's going to work. It sounds amazing on the face of it. After you choose Logo as your active house, it's an artifact. You place one amber from the common pool on Redacted. And when there are four or more amber on Redacted, you sacrifice it and forge a key for free. It sounds amazing, but even if you've got it on your first Logo's turn, you're not forging a key until your fifth Logo's turn. And then all it takes is for someone to drop something like a barehanded or to attack with something like a snudge, and then all of a sudden you've lost it, and you lose all the amber on it, and we have to start again. But oh my goodness, it's going to work sometimes, and when it does, it is definitely definitely going to be amazing didn't know what to do with this now in the poll i put up on the facebook group thank you for everyone that helped with that it came in at number six i cannot put it at number six i think 10 is fair it deserves to be on the list just for how interesting it is and how good it could be but i don't think i can justify putting it any higher in at number nine, we've got Binate Rupture. Another card that I just have no earthly idea what I should actually do with. It's got an alpha, which means you've got to play it as a first thing during your turn. Forge a key if you can, then do this. But each player gains amber equal to the amber in their pool. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. This is going to be bad just as often as it's going to be good. I suppose we've got a really good deck, it's going to be good more often, and a bad deck is going to be bad more often. But you know what I mean here. This is not an inherently reliable card. But the fact of the matter is, sometimes you're going to play it down and go from, say, 8 amber to 16. Now, the other thing holding this back, of course, is that you play it after forging a key if you're able. Which means if you start the turn with 9 amber... You pay six to forge a key, you're left with three, Binate Rupture puts you back up to six. Having said that, Virtuous Works gave you free amber, and that's a pretty gosh darn good card. The best combo here really is with Miasma. Your opponent makes you skip your forge a key step, so you might have, say, seven, eight amber, then you play Binate Rupture. That would be fun. In at number eight, Jar Goggle. Jar Goggle is a two power creature with no armor and elusive, so moderately difficult to take down. When you play, you put a card from your hand face down under Jar Goggle, and when Jar Goggle is destroyed, if it's your turn, you play the card, otherwise, you archive the card. So, what you do, very much like archiving, you stash a card under it ready to bring it out later. So maybe you end up playing something like Life for a Life, so that you can sacrifice this to play the card when you want it. Or maybe your opponent takes it out and you end up archiving a card. This is a really fun one, but again, it's not always good. It is good if you've got a card in your hand that you want to save for later, maybe something like a Too Much to Protect, and it comes back at the right time. Because you see, if you've got an archive full of Logos cards and your opponent destroys Jar Goggle on their turn, then you've got one Shadows card in your archive full of Logos cards, which means you pick it up on a Logos turn and you've got a card clogging your hand that you don't want. Similarly, if Jar Goggle gets destroyed on your turn, but your opponent doesn't have more than six Amber, it's kind of pointless. This is not always going to work. But it lets you stash a card for later in the game. That, ladies and gentlemen, could be an awful lot of fun. In at number seven, standardized testing. I jumped this one quite a bit from the poll that I did over on Facebook. You guys had this down at number nine. Yeah, nine. And I've got it up at number seven. I really like it. Now, like a lot of the cards we've seen so far, it's only good sometimes. You can say that about a lot of Keyforge cards. 
When you play it, you destroy each creature with the lowest power and each creature with the highest power. So there's a whole bunch of two power creatures like Jog Goggle, like Ember Imp, etc. This will get rid of all of them in one go. While also getting rid of the highest, assuming it's not the highest. That would be weird if the two was the highest creature on the board. Though it does happen fairly often, I suppose. The point is, this is kind of like a board wipe. But it's not always going to work. And sometimes it's going to destroy all of your creatures and none of your opponents. This is not a reliable card. Sometimes it will work. Sometimes it won't work. And sometimes it will massively, massively backfire. But the fact of the matter is, this is an emergency destroy a bunch of creatures card, and logos really don't have many of them. If we were looking at this, where we had stuff like free fates and unlocked gateway and gateway to this and key to this and all of that, yeah, okay. I wouldn't be particularly high on it. But the fact of the matter is, we don't have those kind of cards in logos. This is, frankly, the best we've got in terms of, boom, blow up the board. And although it won't work always, I still think that deserves a space at number seven. In at number six, I'm cheating a little bit. We're going Titan Librarian and ZYX Researcher. Because when I sat down to do the list, I couldn't separate them out. Titan Librarian, four power creature at the end of your turn. If it's not on a flank, you archive a card. ZYX Researcher, a two power creature. When you play it, you archive the top card of your deck or the top card of your discard pile. This is the reason we all have to keep our discard piles in order nowadays. I mean, to be fair, the rules always said we need to, but this is the card that really makes it relevant. The fact of the matter is, both of these cards serve the same function. They are both there to do a little bit of archiving, to make it so that you can chuck some cards in your archive, save them for later, etc. They're not phenomenal. They're not going to win you the game all that much, any road. But what they are going to do is allow you to just chuck some cards in your archive, wait till later, grab them out, and go and have a big turn. Neither of them are particularly good at fighting. Both of them will sit there reaping until they're destroyed, which probably won't take terribly long. They don't have elusive. But for while they're there, for what they do, they're pretty good at archiving. So I'm putting them joint in at number six. In at number five, we've got Archimedes, a card so important and so awkward that I actually had to go ahead and make a video all about it. You see, what it does is it gives each of its neighbours the skill, destroyed, archive this creature. And it was ruled that with a board wipe, i.e. something like unlocked gateway that destroys everything, everybody is archived, which incidentally makes Archimedes a lot better. Can clog your archive if you've got a bunch of different houses out but can also mean you archive all the creatures you want to use again, especially the ones with great coming into play abilities. Think something like... Oh, I don't want to ruin the surprise, but there are a couple on this list. Archimedes is good. Archimedes means that your creatures come back. There's a lot to love about Archimedes. Two-power creature with elusive. It's not particularly big or bulky or anything like that, but what it does do is it protects all of your creatures, and it means that you can put something down next to it Knowing that when it gets destroyed, you can bring it right back. How about Jar Goggle? There we go. He's got a play ability. In at number four, we've got Professor Sutterkin. One of my favorite cards to say in Keyforge. And a card that I've got to use on a number of occasions. And when you can use it, it's phenomenal. If it was more reliable, I'd probably put it at number one. It's a two-power creature, and when you reap, you draw a card for each friendly Logos creature. Not friendly ready Logos creature, each friendly Logos creature. So if you've got two Logos creatures out, yes, Sutterkin does count himself. And then you play four, and they're all exhausted, you can reap and draw six while getting the amber for reaping. It is phenomenal. So why doesn't it get higher up the list? Because it's going to be destroyed. It is what we like to refer to as a burn the witch card, kind of like Dusk Witch. 
It is such a good card that if your opponent knows what it does or has ever played against it and sees it on the field, they are going to target it. I have had games where I drew eight or more cards two turns in a row with Sutterkin. And I won those games because I had a huge advantage. And we know draw power is great. It's why we love Time Traveler. It's why Library Access was so gosh darn good. It's why Martian Generosity is one of the best cards in the entirety of Age of Ascension. Nobody's arguing otherwise. But the thing that dings Professor Sutterkin, two power creature, no elusive, it's just not going to stay around very much. It is, if you've got a two power creature on the board or anything better, you can always take down Sutterkin. And that's the problem. It is phenomenal when it works it just doesn't work often enough sorry in at number three we've got igor it's another two power creature without elusive but this one is always going to be good when you play it you look at the top three cards of your deck add one to your hand discard the others and okay sometimes you'll have painful discards sometimes there's a card you're really waiting for and it gets discarded and then you've got to wait to refresh your deck when your deck runs out and your disco pile becomes your deck in order to actually get it. But if that's the case, don't play Igor. If you are desperately waiting for that too much to protect and you know that it's in a deck of, say, seven cards, don't play Igor. The fact of the matter is we don't have much search in Keyforge at all. And this is kind of like search. I mean, if Time Travel is great when it draws you two cards, albeit with an Amber bonus... This essentially, it doesn't draw you three cards, but it means that if that card that you want is in your top three, you can grab it. By the way, the previous example, obviously if the only thing you want is too much to protect, Igor is great to find it. What I mean is if it's too early for too much to protect and you hit the thing you're actually looking for, then you might have to discard too much to protect. Obviously, if that's the only thing you're looking for, Igor is phenomenal. Just thought I should clear that up. Coming in at number two, Eureka. It's an alpha card. Okay. So it's got to be the first thing that you do when you play it during your turn. But it gives you an amber bonus. And it gains you two amber. And you archive two random cards from your hand. So it's kind of like Virtuous works in that you just get free amber when you play it. But you've got to archive two random cards from your hand. Now, that can be a problem. Because two things are going to happen that could be bad. Number one, you archive a card that you wanted to use this turn. That's a bad thing. Number two, you archive cards from the wrong house. I've said this on a number of occasions. When it comes to archiving, what you really want to do is build up an archive of one house. So you've got eight or nine Logos cards in your archive, and then when you take your archive, you can roll with Logos. What you don't want to do is have all three houses in your archive, because then you pick up six or seven archived cards. You've got too many cards you're not going to be drawing at the end of your turn, but you can't play them all because they're from all three houses. That's not ideal. It can go wrong. But it also gets you free amber. And if you archive, say, two Shadows cards on a Logos turn, that's great. Because then you draw more cards at the end of your turn and you can grab them during your Shadows turn. It's risky, which is why it doesn't come in at number one. But it is pretty gosh darn good. But I'll be honest with you, number one's super easy. It's Helperbot. And I always do the poll on Facebook, so I want to see what you guys think. Huge thanks, as always, to anyone that joins in. But I don't care what the poll was going to say. Halperbot was always going to be number one. As far as I'm concerned, Halperbot is the number one here by a huge margin. And it's not even close. Yes, it's a one power creature, so it literally couldn't be weaker. No, it doesn't have elusive or anything like that to keep it on the board any longer. I still don't care. When you play it, you may play one non-Logos card this turn. It's Phase Shift. Now, the downside is that Phase Shift goes to your discard pile so that you can hopefully get it back quicker. Helperbot sits on your bench, but then you give your opponent a really hilarious choice. Well, hilarious from your point of view. If they take down Helperbot, it's in the discard. Maybe you can get it back with something like a regrowth, for instance. If your opponent doesn't destroy it, it sits there reaping. So either they let you reap, 
or they put it in your discard pile, allowing you to potentially recover it. It's amazing. And it lets you play a card from another house. One of my favorite combos in Age of Ascension, it's not always going to work, but playing Exume on a disc turn to play Helperbot to play a card from your third house, so you're using all three houses in one turn. Helperbot is phenomenal, and Helperbot lets you do things like play too much to protect. It's a great card. When your opponent goes, oh, it's a Logos turn, they can't possibly. Oh, no! That's what's so great about it. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's my top 10 cards from Logos. But as always, I'd love to hear from you. What are your favorite cards from Logos? What have you had success with? What have you drawn decks that include, etc.? Go nuts, ladies and gentlemen. But please do remember the rule. Be nice, would ya? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, where we talk about games like Keyforge and a whole bunch of others. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching Wossy Plays.